The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. It looks the same, feels a little bit different, but what's new? Is it worth the upgrade? Well, I'm going to be really straightforward here. The new Galaxy Z Fold 4 is an iterative upgrade over the Galaxy Z Fold 3. There are a lot of tiny incremental improvements, but no matter how tiny those improvements may be, they actually have a very huge impact and drastically improve the user experience overall. So I've been using this device for the past week or so, and here is the list of tiny things that I have discovered. And that also means that this video is going to be long and everything is going to be timestamped so you can skip to whichever part that you want to know the most about. So, let's begin. We'll start off with the most obvious upgrade of all, the performance. So, this new Galaxy Z Fold 4 is powered by the new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset and of course, this phone is going to be a productivity powerhouse and also a fantastic device if you want to use it for gaming as well. However, because of such a humongous display, we have to enable the Game Booster Plus and set the game resolution to the highest so that it wouldn't look jaggy and we also enable the alternate game performance management mode as well so we can get the most performance out of this device. And we also tried the usual Genshin Impact at the highest graphical settings and yeah, I would have to say the performance coming out of this device is really good. The surface temperature is kept at about 40 degrees Celsius all the time, which means that this device is mostly gonna slightly warm to the touch and that's about it. But with the new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, everyone's concern is going to be about its efficiency and the battery life of the Galaxy Z Fold 4. For whatever reason, Samsung decided to reuse the exact same 4400mAh battery from last year for this new phone. So to have a scientific test regarding its battery life, we use back the standard PCMark battery life test and the screen brightness locked at 100 nits of brightness. And for the Galaxy Z Fold 4, we did a total of two different tests for this battery life. So the first one is the cover display only, and the second test is for the inner display. So for the cover display, we recorded it to be at about 11 hours and 12 minutes, which is pretty okay and it can somewhat last you throughout a full days of use if you don't play games on it using the cover display only. But if we exclusively use the inner display only, then we recorded at about 9 hours and 59 minutes. And yeah, this is going to be a bit tricky if you only want to use the inner display for the full day. And since we also did the exact same battery life test for the Galaxy Z Fold 3 from last year, we have a direct comparison in terms of its battery longevity. So the Galaxy Z Fold 3 lasted for about 9 hours and 8 minutes for the inner display and I would say that the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is definitely an improvement in terms of its battery life but um, it's not by much and I seriously would prefer a much larger battery instead of what we have here. And as a quick mention, the charging time also is exactly the same as the Galaxy Z Fold 3 so it can only accept up to 25 watts maximum and it takes about 80 minutes to charge from 15 to 100% and I mean with the same battery capacity and also the same fast charging wattage means exact same charging speed, right? So no surprises here. Okay, I also quickly want to highlight the design here. So the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is looking identical to last year's Galaxy Z Fold 3, but there are a few tiny changes here and there. So it is now available in three different colors. So we have the usual phantom black, the new beige color, and the one that we have here is the gray green color. It looks a bit muted, but I would say it is my favorite out of the three colors available for this year. And we also have one more exclusive color, which is the burgundy color that is only exclusively available on Samsung's website. The overall shape of the phone also got slightly shorter and wider. The hinge also got a tiny change whereby the gap between the cover display and also the hinge part is shrunken a little bit. And also speaking of the hinge, when we fold the device, the gap is also slightly bigger compared to the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and I think that is okay because it alleviates some of that pressure to prevent material fatigue so that the display inside wouldn't crack that easily. That bigger gap also somewhat decreased the crease a little bit. Yeah, I know that's a very bad pun but the crease just doesn't feel as deep as last year's phone. And the hinge also feels a bit stiffer compared to the Galaxy Z Fold 3 so yeah, it definitely feels not that easy to open or close now. Now, as for the screen, they are actually very different this time around. 
on paper it looks like the same size but actually they did change a lot in terms of the dimension as in the height and length of the screen so let's get started with the cover display first so i immediately realized that this phone is also a lot boxier compared to the previous generation so the age between this panel and also the, the frame is also boxier, more angular, so you can find screen protectors easily now. And that is especially important because Samsung did not include any screen protector for the cover display this year. And the cover display is also using the same 6.2 inch screen and it can also go up to 120Hz refresh rate but with a resolution of 2316 by 904 pixels. That means the overall shape of the cover display becomes a little bit shorter and wider. And this tiny change made to the cover display dimension also has a huge implication for the entire device. So since the cover display is literally half of the device when we unfold it, you can see the entire device is even shorter and wider, a lot wider actually. So when we unfold the device, it is now using a 2176 by 1812 pixels display. And one more upgrade they did to the inner display is of course the under display camera area here. It has a much higher pixel density around that area and it's just very difficult to even see through our camera or our naked eye because the higher pixel density just masks it off really well. As for the refresh rate, the inner display still go up to 120Hz refresh rate but we also need to talk about efficiency for a while because Samsung did say that this display can go down all the way to 1Hz which means, yeah, you're gonna get real good battery life out of it. The cover display also goes down to 1Hz, by the way. Okay, with all of those specs out of the way, how's the color accuracy of this Galaxy Z Fold 4 screen? Well, we did a total of three different tests. The first one is for the cover display only, and then the second test is for the left side of the inner display. The third one is for the right side of the inner display and I have to tip my imaginary hat off to Samsung because the color accuracy between all of these three sections that we've tested is supremely similar to each other. All of them covers virtually 100% of both sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamuts and I should also highlight that the brightness of all three sections that we've tested can also go up to about 750 nits of brightness. All that we have to do is head into the settings menu. When we disable auto brightness, there is another option that appears. It's called extra brightness. If you tap on it, then you can go up to 750 nits of brightness for the cover display and also the inner display. That is just amazing and you won't have any issues using this phone outdoors during a supremely sunny day. Okay, so moving forward, one more change that Samsung did is on the cameras. So the new Galaxy Z Fold 4 still has a total of triple cameras, but the main camera has been upgraded to a 50 megapixel sensor and the telephoto camera is now at a lower resolution of 10 megapixels only, but the lens got changed to a 3x telephoto zoom instead. Now, both the main and telephoto camera still has OIS, so that is still really handy for those who have shaky hands like me. And with that said, the camera pictures coming out of the main camera looks fantastic. Both indoors and outdoors, they look amazing and I absolutely like the colors produced by all of the shots taken here. And especially for this shot with a lot of dark skies, the overall vibe of it is just very dramatic. The telephoto camera is also something that I think needs a bit more fine tuning. For example, this kind of shot indoors, they look good. But somehow, this kind of shot taken outdoors, well, the building look funny. Now as for the ultra wide angle camera, it is the same as the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and I think that's okay since the ultra wide angle camera is mostly used for outdoors when we are taking pictures of sceneries anyway. So yeah. And one more quick highlight is that the under display camera selfie quality has to go through a lot of software magic to make the picture look good. Well, my face is definitely smoother than it is but it is how the software works. The video capability is also something that I quickly want to highlight. So both the main and telephoto camera can capture up to 4K 60fps, while the ultra wide angle camera can only capture up to 4K 30fps. And now here comes the most fun part about the Galaxy Z Fold 4, the software. Now, we still have the usual flex mode and whatnot, but what I want to highlight here is Android 12L, also known as Android 12.1. 
This is the first ever device to be shipped with Android 12L, which I honestly was looking forward to since its announcement earlier this year. The reason why I'm looking forward to Android 12L is because its emphasis on bigger displays and tablets and, you guessed it, foldable devices like the Galaxy Z Fold series of smartphones. The most important feature here are right in front of you. So when you open an app, you have a taskbar at the bottom there, and you can also tap and hold to either hide or reveal the taskbar as well. And with the taskbar there, that means we can switch between apps much more quickly than ever before. And we can also tap and hold on any of those apps and then start dragging it into sections of the screen so that we can run two apps side by side at the same time. And we're still not done yet. Heading into the settings menu, we can go into the advanced settings and then head into labs. And here we have two more options for multitasking gestures that we can enable. The first one is to swipe from either sides, left, right or bottom to also use the side-by-side -side app feature. And then we can also swipe from the top right corner so that we can enable floating window mode. And I mean, that's only part of the benefits of Android 12L that we can use right now. The whole list of guidelines for app developers to follow and make their apps work properly with devices like this is also published on Google's website. With that, I can see a very bright future for foldable devices in terms of app compatibility. Even the Facebook app works a lot better right now in terms of transitioning between the inner display and the cover display. And of course, all of these multitasking features are currently available on Android 12L, but it will also be integrated into Android 13. But once we fold the device and use the cover display only, then yeah, Android 12 L or just basic Android 12, it's gonna be more or less the same in terms of its user experience. And we still have a few more things that we want to highlight. For example, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 has a USB 3.0 port at the bottom of this phone. That means we can use Samsung DeX with this device and it is also still IPX8 rated, so we can immerse the entire phone underwater. So in conclusion, I know that this review is really long and there are a lot of details that we had to talk about, but the most important thing here is the price. For the US, it is actually exactly the same price as the Galaxy Z Fold 3, which I think is just a real good move. But for us here in Malaysia, the price has increased by 100 ringgit from last year, which I think is perfectly fine because we got two huge perks. The first one is of course the extra year of warranty and the second one is three times free exchange or replacement for the inner display screen protector thing which I saw a lot of people's Galaxy Z Fold 3 started peeling off by itself so it is good that Samsung provided three times for us to replace for the Galaxy Z Fold 4. And I would have to say, if you're already eyeing for the Galaxy Z Fold 3 but decided not to, then I think this is the perfect time for you to jump into the world of foldables with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. You can also obviously trade in your current devices for some rebate, which I will leave all of the links down below so you can check it out for yourself. And that's it. This is definitely not the last time that we're gonna see the Galaxy Z Fold 4 because I want to focus more on the app compatibility and multitasking features in the future. So that's it. Will you get the Galaxy Z Fold 4? Most importantly, will you upgrade from the Galaxy Z Fold 3? Because I don't really see a reason for you to do so, but if you want to get all of the latest and flashiest features, yeah, do, do, do let us know down in the comment section below.